it's Katie, and it is another day, another traffic jam. A car fire that tied up traffic on the Howard Franklin Bridge. If you're headed over the Howard Franklin Bridge. The Howard Franklin Bridge. The Howard Franklin Bridge. This is the Howard Franklin. It's the middle of the three bridges that cross between Tampa and the St. Pete Clearwater area. Yeah, the one that nobody spells right. Kind of like the Bernstein Bears. We got a message from somebody asking if the name had actually been changed. So, about that... Recently, a viewer sent me this postcard, and it's a picture of the Howard Franklin in its early days, but if you look closely, you can see it's spelled Franklin. And that had me scratching my head because I thought it was named after a person and he spelled his name as Frank Land, but there it was in this postcard. Determined to find out the true name of the bridge and if it's ever changed, I chatted with an expert at the Tampa Bay History Center and he says the name can cause confusion. But first, let's talk about the man who wanted this bridge built and that's William Howard Franklin. Howard Franklin, uh, spelled L-A-N-D, uh, was a um, you know, influential businessman here in Tampa. Uh, one of the things that uh, he owned, kind of his main claim to fame, were tire companies and gas stations. The son of a horse and buggy seller, Franklin arrived in Tampa in 1925 and would be involved in all kinds of businesses and ventures. He founded Pioneer Tire and Rubber Products Incorporated, worked as a banker, and that's actually his office right there. And most importantly, he was a member of the Florida State Road Board. Over the years, interstate highways were starting to spread around the country. Originally, the interstate highways were meant to move people around cities, not through them. But as more people bought cars and hit the road, the federal government realized the need for these city connectors. And that's how I-275 was born. So 275 was intended to go through uh, Tampa, through downtown and through West Tampa, and eventually make its way over to Pinellas County down to St. Petersburg. And there were already two bridges that crossed Tampa Bay, uh, Gandhi Bridge and what was originally the Ben T. Davis Causeway, what became Courtney Campbell Causeway. But neither one of those bridges could really accommodate the interstate and they really weren't in the right place either. In comes Howard Franklin and conveniently he owned property on the Tampa side, right where the bridge would need to be built. It made perfect sense for him to have uh, not only the influence to, to bring that interstate here and, and, and help kind of guide its path, but also to make a little bit of money in the process. Getting the bridge approved though wouldn't be easy. People simply didn't see a need for a third bridge and some thought no one would use it. But by the 1950s, early 1960s, the Tampa Bay area was growing fast and there were more and more cars on the road demonstrating a need for this third connector. So Franklin sold his property to the government and construction started in 1957. While he had nothing to do with the design or the construction of the bridge, it was his idea. So it was named after him, Howard Franklin. But it's not a happy ending for this bridge because after it was built, that's when the problem started. The design proved to be pretty dangerous. And so there were a lot of car accidents and some of those, a lot of them were fatal. The bridge had four lanes, two going in each direction. It was separated by what was basically a tall curb and there wasn't much of a shoulder for drivers to pull over onto. If there was an accident in one lane and it was a particularly, you know, kind of violent crash, uh, one or two of those cars could, could enter oncoming traffic to make the accident even worse. The bridge developed quite the reputation, with at least 10 people dying in the first few years of it being open. While the name was never Howard Franklin, it was often called the Howard Frankenstein, and even the car strangled spanner. It was really, it was a monster. It was a very dangerous uh, bridge to cross. In response to the accidents, signs and warnings were installed and lanes were painted with solid white lines to prevent passing and lane changes. In 1962, steel reinforced concrete barriers were also added. Less accidents happened, but more people were crossing the bridge, making it inefficient. So in the 1980s, another parallel span with four lanes was added. Now there would be eight lanes in hopes of alleviating that traffic. But the bridge ran into another problem when I-275 was also expanded to eight lanes. Now, with no additional capacity on the bridge, it faced another round of overcrowding. Fast forward to today, the Florida Department of Transportation is still trying to improve the bridge. In 2020, construction started to build a completely new bridge that will carry southbound traffic. Once that's done, the current southbound traffic will be converted to carry northbound traffic. It'll also have a pathway for pedestrian and bicycle traffic. 
Since then, the infamous nicknames of the bridge have faded, but the mix-up between Howard Franklin and Howard Franklin remain. In Tampa, there's a Franklin Street named after Benjamin Franklin. And of course, we have the Howard Franklin Bridge. Because the names sound so familiar, I think people often get confused by them. And Ben Franklin, I hope, is still pretty well known. But Howard Franklin isn't really that well known. When you hear the name Franklin, if you don't really emphasize the land part of it, it can turn into Lynn, Franklin and people can get confused by them. So it's always been the Howard Franklin, and for the foreseeable future, it will continue to be called that. And for this postcard, well, it's a nice photo, but it's not the Howard Franklin. Do you have any questions about the area or maybe just why things are the way they are? Well, I wanna hear from you, so send over your questions. You can email me at mjones at 10 tampabaycom or you can find me on Twitter at katiejonestv. Don't forget to like this video, drop a comment below, and hit that subscribe button because we have new episodes dropping from this series, our Welcome to Florida series, and Jenna's investigative series, What's Bruin, every week here on The Deeper Dive.